What's going on everyone? Luke Nelson here with Vole. Today I'm going to run you through how to set up your hardware on your split board. Just to be clear, the order in which you do this doesn't really matter, but as long as you do it all, you should be fine. So I'm going to start with the light speed binding toe pieces. All you really have to do is put this metal crampon bracket in the right place, line up the screws, and you're good to go. The touring bracket screws are M6 10 millimeter screws. We do have replacements here at our shop in Salt Lake City. And just remember that the touring bracket ones, there's three and they're the shorter screw. If you're attaching brand new screws to the board, you won't have to worry about doing anything different. But if you've taken them off before or a few times, you might wanna add some thread lock to the screws just to make sure they stay in there. We recommend just going with a standard blue thread lock. Just add a little bit of thread lock to each screw. Too much will result in hydraulic pressure being pushed down as you're tightening them, and then it'll cause the base of your board to dimple out, and you don't want that. Make sure to tighten them by hand and not with an impact wrench. That will also compromise the structure of the board. All right, once you got your touring brackets in, we're gonna move right on to the heel pieces. The heel pieces will come in individual parts. We'll get to that shortly. But once they're all together, you wanna to make sure that it's facing the correct way. The shorter, fatter riser should be pointing towards the tail of the board, while the longer riser should be pointing towards the nose. Assembling the heel piece, the biggest mistake that people make is mixing up the rear and the front heel riser. The shorter heel riser will point towards the tail of the board, while the longer one points towards the nose. When installing these, you'll just flip over the nylon piece and then spread the wires into the channel. It should end up looking like this. Same thing with the front heel riser. Next, you'll take this small nylon piece, put it over the pre-drilled holes, Put the base plate on, put the heel riser piece over the top, make sure the climbing wires are facing up as seen here. If you can't raise the wires with a pole or your hand easily, you've done it wrong. The heel bracket screws are M6 16 millimeter screws and there's only two of them per heel bracket. Again, you want to only tighten these by hand and don't add too much thread lock if you are doing so. All right, now that these are locked in, we're going to move right on to our channel puck system. Our new pucks have a canted design of three degrees. Now this means you can put them on wrong, so don't do that. The easiest way you can tell you're doing it right is just make sure the incline is facing in towards the center of your board. Installing them is easy enough. You have these channel system T-nuts here. Now you can just slide them in. It can be a little tricky to do by hand, so what I like to do is take the screw, screw it in like that, and guide it into the channel. Again, you wanna just tighten these screws by hand. The beauty of this new channel design is that it can be adjusted almost instantly to whatever stance that you prefer. Your bindings will come with one of these guides and all you have to do is just loosen the screws enough to get them to move around, throw that guide over, and figure out what degree that you prefer. You can move it around freely to adjust how wide or small your stance is and change the degrees. Once you find the setting you like, Simply just tighten the screws and you're good to go. The inside of the pucks are textured and the metal brackets that the screws push down on have teeth. So once you tighten them, they're not going anywhere. But just to be safe, every once in a while, check them, make sure they're tightened down. We also designed access to these screws through our newest light speed binding. So if you're in the field and you want to adjust your binding, you simply just slide the binding over, loosen the screws, and move the binding to wherever is comfortable for you. 
This channel touring setup allows backcountry users to easily and quickly adjust their bindings in the field or at home on the bench. Once you're locked in with how you want your bindings to be set up, you're pretty much home free with just maintenance every few weeks or so. You want to check the tightness of the bolts every once in a while to make sure that the board is still being held together adequately. Again, you'll just want to tighten these by hand. If you have problems with your tip or tail clips or anything else on a volet or non-volet split board, feel free to bring it down to our Salt Lake shop and we'll get you fixed up. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, feel free to send us an email, comment on the video, or give our customer service team a call. That's all for today.